Today, Donald Trump's co-defendant, Mark Meadows, testified for five hours at a hearing in hopes of getting his charges in the Georgia election case moved from state to federal court. Meadows, of course, was Trump's final chief of staff, is charged with racketeering stemming from alleged efforts to reverse the 2020 results in Georgia. Today, Meadows told the court that any actions he took were part of his official duties as chief of staff. Also on the stand, Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State who Trump begged to find enough votes to overturn Joe Biden's win there. With us for more, Kara Lennig, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter for The Washington Post, and Phil Rucker, the next national editor, also at The Post, and a dear colleague and co-author with Carol. Together they wrote the New York Times bestseller, I Alone Can Fix It. All right, Carol, all sorts of legal experts said there is no way Mark Meadows is taking the stand and voila, he showed up, not for one, not for two, five straight hours. Why would his legal team make a move like that? I mean, it was do or die, Steph. I mean, I don't fault anybody who came up with this prediction. I understand that there are huge stakes huge stakes for someone to take the stand and essentially give a preview, a mini pretrial of what was going to happen in this case, the mini defense of Mark Meadows. But it was do or die whether or not he was going to be able to remove himself from this state court, go to federal court, which, which is where he thinks he has the best chance of dismissing these charges entirely. He couldn't do that and get a judge to agree unless he had some hard testimony, either from himself or another witness, to make the argument, hey, I was just acting within my federal duties. I'm the chief of staff for the president. I have to attend his calls. I have to arrange them. I have to participate in them. And that's essentially what he argued. And there are, of course, as you will probably ask, Steph, some, some big caveats in what Mark Meadows had to say in his four-plus hours. Yes, big. Um, how big of a deal is it, Phil, that we got this sneak peek, this preview for Meadows to testify this early in the case? Didn't he kind of show his cards? Well, he did, Steph, uh, and he had to answer a lot of questions. And he wasn't the only one testifying today. We heard also from Brad Raffensperger. A lot of detail played out in that courtroom about the January 2nd, 2021 phone call that the former secretary of state in Georgia had with the former president. Mark Meadows was on that call. He spoke in that call. And Mark Meadows was really pressed in his testimony today in court about what he was doing, uh, intervening in this way uh, in this election dispute. He was the chief of staff at the White House, and here he was uh, advancing the agenda of the Trump campaign uh, and challenging the election results, despite the fact that there wasn't uh, evidence to support those challenges. But he had to begin to answer some of that. And that, of course, is going to end up being the argument we'll see play out as this uh, as this case moves along uh, towards trial, whether it's in the state court uh, or gets to the federal court, as Meadows would like to see happen. I want to play a little bit of that, because we have heard for well over a year Trump on that call asking Raffensperger to find those 11,000 votes. But to your point, Meadows was on that call as well. And here's what he had to say. What I'm hopeful for is, is there some way that we can we can find uh, some kind of an agreement to to uh, to look at this a little bit more fully, Mr. Secretary, I, I can tell you, you said there was only two dead people that would vote. Uh, I, I can promise you there are more than that. I can promise you there are more than that. How do you explain that one? Well, Steph, I think Meadows <laughs> was trying to make an argument uh, to the Secretary of State that there was more fraud than is apparent based on the evidence, uh, largely, I, I would think, to please his boss, the former president, uh, who was trying to convince himself and really convince the public uh, that he won when, in fact, he had lost that election. And one of the things that you heard Meadows uh, explain in court today uh, was that he was acting in that call as almost sort of a negotiation uh, because there had had been active litigation between the Trump campaign uh, and the state regarding those election results. But Raffensperger, when he was asked in court whether he considered that um, a, a settlement negotiation, he said, no, that's not what that was. That was, in his terms, an extraordinary uh, kind of uh, pressure campaign underway. Carol, you covered the White House back then. Meadows is arguing 
that he was just doing his job as chief of staff. What was that guy's job every day? What did he do? I can imagine having that job, Steph, if only because um, there have been very few chiefs of staff who had to serve a master that constantly wanted the reassurance that everything that he was proposing, illegal, improper, um, against the federal regulations, against federal policy, against the interests of even national security or previous diplomatic treaties, that that he was seeking, Donald Trump was seeking, for Mark Meadows to endorse all of those acts, no matter how wild, no matter how improper. And in this instance, you know, what I think was the most interesting stuff about Mark Meadows' testimony is he said, essentially, I didn't really believe all the fraud allegations that were coming in, but I believed that some could have some validity and some signature verification needed to happen in Georgia. That's his excuse for being on that call. But I think Phil is exactly right, and he and I lived this, which is that Mark Meadows had to play the role of pleasing the king. He was a courtier, essentially, a, a, a court player who had to make sure the boss was happy, that the emperor thought his clothes were gorgeous. And that was the role he played over and over again. Mark Short today, I believe, said that he's got serious pause. This is Vice President Pence's then chief of staff, said he has serious pause about Meadows' claim that he was just acting as a federal employee serving the interests of the executive office of the presidency. Mark Short makes the good point. If that's really the case, then why were you not involving the Department of Justice? Why were you not involving the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone? Why is that? Because all of them rejected as crazy town the allegation that there was any fraud that would change the outcome in Georgia or anywhere else. My goodness, this thing is only getting hairier by the day. Carol Lennig, Phil Rucker. Hope you guys are getting ready for another book because it'll be a juicy one. <laughs>